Hello, I'm Antonio Neves, and this is an Ad Age Special Report. While no CMO has an easy job these days, few face as daunting a task as Jeffrey Hazlett. He's the chief marketing officer of Kodak, a company that has suffered one of the century's most stunning implosions. Its traditional product lines have been decimated by the digital revolution. Now, back in 1988, Kodak employed 145,000 people. Today, it employs less than 20,000. And currently, it's frantically trying to reinvent itself as a digital imaging business. But it's posted major losses in the last four quarters. Meanwhile, Mr. Hazlett has become as effective a cheerleader as he is a stage presence for the struggling brand. Here's an excerpt of his latest performance at the recent ANA annual conference. How many of you just, just helped me out here and bought a roll of film in the last year? Please raise your hands. Thank you, sir, and you, ma'am, back there. We appreciate that very much. It's really helped us a lot this quarter. Um, how many of you own a, a digital um, camera or a, or a digital camera on your phone? Raise your hands. Welcome to my world. Because I'm going to talk to you about some fundamental transformation, one of the biggest turnarounds of all business history, certainly in American business history, but world business history, according to Financial Times. 60% of the people that work for Kodak are new in the last four years. We have 19 products who drive almost all of our revenue. Of the 19 products, all of them are number one, number two, or number three in the marketplace. All of them. 11 of them are digital products. Half of our products didn't exist two years ago. And with that becomes a marketing challenge, an advertising challenge for our company in terms of who we want to be, in terms of fundamental brand transformation of Kodak. And we start bringing out new products like this happens to be our new ZI8, okay? It's an unbelievable product. And $179 HD, uh, 1080p, 720. I mean, it's got image stabilization. It's unbelievable, except the name sucks. We called it the ZI8. We've been naming our products like the A series, the B series, the MCs, the Vs. Finally, we got to the Zs. Thank God we got to Z. Okay, what's the next one going to be called, I told the team? AA? I mean, I mean, so we're actually coming out with new names, and I'll talk about how we drove that, because we actually went to Twitter, and we put this out, and then the Boston Globe wrote an article that said, this is the biggest, beautifulest, most product for the Christmas season, unbelievable. He said, but what marketing genius came up with the name? <laughs> so I printed it out, ran down the seventh floor, grabbed everybody on the floor I could get my hands on, and they call it the Hazlet proximity rule. Don't make eye contact, or he will assign something to you, okay? <laughs> and so... I grabbed absolutely everybody, get into the conference room. I said, look at this article, look at this article. I told you we got the greatest product in the world. We've redesigned, we've done all this great stuff with Black Fade and everything that we're doing to transform the brand. And then we go and name it the ZI8, the ZI8. It sucks. What are we going to do? Someone says, well, we ought to put out a contest for the next one for CES. I said, great idea. Let's do it. Oh, let's get everybody together and let's figure out how we do it. Let's launch it. How many days do we have before we have to go through the product clearance on the names? They said, seven days. Okay, let's go. And so then someone said, but we don't have legal's permission and we got a person who's in charge of contest. I turned to somebody and said, what the hell do you mean we got a person in charge of contest? <laughs> we have a person in charge of our company that's just in charge of contest? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I want that freaking job. So for two days, legal was telling me we can't send it out because if you don't get permission, you'll get a fine. Finally, after two days, time slipped, and I want to get the name because we said that we're going to put a contest out that says the person who wins and says this is the right name, their name will be on the box. Their picture will be on the box, in the box. Some way we'll stand up and see, yes, I'll put my arm around them, I'll announce it, we'll say the product, and we'll get tons of publicity, and it'll be really cool. And you say I'm going to get fined if, if we don't fill out these forms, and you're slowing me up. Yeah. So finally I said, God, how much could the fine be? <laughs> I think Bob liked that. I could hear him laughing back there. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, 50,000 bucks? Okay, go. I, so I finally said, hit the tweet. Let's go. Send it out. Send it out. And I'm telling you, in four days, we had thousands and 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 thousands. I could keep going. Of names submitted. Names from customers who told us what they wanted to call the product and engaged with us, and they sent out over 27,000 tweets of their own telling us. We had more people go to our website and put their name on our website and talk to us about the product since the entire history of our entire flipping website. Okay? 
over a period of four days. And then the form came. <laughs> and the fine was $300. And that's it for the special report. Thanks so much for being with us. I'm Antonio Neves at Advertising Agent New York. <laughs>